Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about something really exciting that I had a bit of experience with last year and that is starting an online business. And why this is so exciting is because I feel like so many of us have those little pipeline dreams of wanting to have a little bit of a side hustle or maybe even wanting to transition out of that nine to five into an idea that you have but you just have no idea where to start and you think it's gonna take a lot of time or a lot of effort or it'll be extremely difficult to source products when you just don't know anything about that field. So I'm gonna help you from a very basic standpoint where I began my starting a business journey and really help you guys follow along from inception to completion and how I managed to source a product get samples, you know, do the logo, the branding, the website, all of that, and get it out into production and start selling. So I hope you guys will enjoy this video. I think there's so, so much to learn and there's just so many of us out there that have that little entrepreneurial spirit. So I hope this is relatable and useful. And if it is, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because I put up new content every single week. So here is my little product, which I ended up creating and I will reveal that to you later, but I'm going to leave it be a little bit of a mystery for now because I want to take you through the process of how I kind of even came up with my idea and how long it kind of took me to put everything all together. So first of all, I think it was around about the time before we went into lockdown even, it was like a new year's kind of thing for me. And my partner talks to me a lot about the idea of passive income and having multiple streams of income. So to me, it was really important to try and get something set up. And I really just wanted to take on that steep learning curve and just think, what is a product or an idea or something that I am really passionate and excited about? So I find often in like an Evernote or in the notes in my phone that I constantly have all these ideas written down, but I was just never really taking action on them. So I had an idea kind of roughly for a specific kind of product, but I just wasn't really sure if that would be suitable. So that is where Alibaba.com came into play. And I had heard of a few people being able to order samples off there. So that was my first port of call. It was, what is the product that I want to get? How can I get an actual sample of it? And then how many, you know, quantities and things like that of this product do I actually have to order? So Alibaba.com was incredible because you can go on there and search even just like what's trending, which is constantly being updated. So if you have absolutely no idea what you want to do, you can go on there, search their trending list and find some products that are really popular right now. So maybe you would like to go down that avenue and take something that is really taking off, rebrand it, put your own spin on it, import it, do whatever it is you're going to do with it, set up an actual store or an online store, or you can go down the other avenue, which was when you have a specific idea in mind, you just search for a supplier on that product. And that's what I ended up doing. So I wanted to do a sleep mask, but the idea was that it needed to be a blackout sleep mask and something that would kind of sit off my face because I've always really hated when sleep masks sit right on your eyes and it just feels really irritating. So I went onto the website and I searched and let me tell you, there is hundreds of thousands of products on there. So, so many different suppliers and it has a really great rating system where you can see like who's a trusted supplier, how many years they've been on there for and you, what kind of products they offer and their pricing. And so there, from there, I started making like a favorites list and just ranking people in terms of who I thought I could get something off what their minimum order quantities were which is moq i swear sometimes you need to learn a whole different language to use these websites but it was very very simple and easy to start to rank and make a list of my preferred suppliers and a lot of them also offer the shipping and insurances and all sorts of things so just to give you a little bit of a peace of mind as well so now that I had a product idea in mind and a few suppliers, I really, really wanted to get my hands on a sample, but it was super important that I knew that it was going to be really high quality because I have a certain value system of like, if I'm going to be selling something and passing it on to people, I wanted it to be a long-term thing. And I didn't want to make something cheap and nasty that was just wasn't going to last or would end up breaking and leaving me with some angry customers. So 
That's why I started some conversations with suppliers and it was really, really great because they offered to put logos on it. They showed me a whole bunch of different options. So for example, with this sleep mask, this is like the stock bag that it came in, but that's what I did for my first order quantity of 100 after I got the sample. And that for me was purely a cost-based decision. Whereas you can obviously get a nicer bag or like a velvet pouch or a padded pouch. So the supplier walked me through all of the different options that they had and all of the different prices, what the order quantities were. And it really just helped me to make a decision because there was like a cost per unit then that I was aware of for how much does it cost me to just make this thing? And then what is the actual resale value? So let me show you my little product. So this is how they all came. They were all individually wrapped in plastic, which I thought was excellent in particular for hygiene issues and just in terms of me wanting to present it or package it in a certain way. So because my product was a sleep mask designed for being a blackout sleep mask for night shift workers, for people coming home late from a club, for traveling on a plane and all of these kind of activities where we just want sleep and want to block out the light. I also thought that I might include some earplugs. So my supplier on alibaba.com found these ones for me and they were black to match with the mask and came in a little case, which I thought was excellent. And it was such a small cost to add that on. So I found that really helpful as well. And the other thing that I wanted and that was really important to me was to be able to customize my product. So they also were able to print on a logo for me. So this is the mask and that is the logo that I created. So I just created this myself in Photoshop and then I had someone on Fiverr.com make this up for me for literally $5. So that was very, very handy. And then they gave me all of the correct files like an EPS file and whatnot that you need for a logo. And I sent it to my supplier from Alibaba.com and then they were able to make a little screen press for it and print the logo on all of my masks. And the whole time I was kept updated via my messages on the app and also just whenever I would log in online on my computer and they sent me so, so many photos of like all of the different samples, how it was kind of looking, even just things like the length of the strap on the back of the mask, the joiner. So if it was to be an openable one, which I ended up going with. So there is Velcro on it and also what kind of depth this mask was and the material. So it was really good because I just thought that I would have to buy a pretty stock kind of product, but they were really able to help me customize it to suit the idea that I had for my business. The next step I had for my business was creating some cards to slip in with it as well. So I ended up making these and I got them printed on Vista print, which was really, really simple. And they were just nice little thank you cards with the branding and where to find everything out as well. So yet again, I just made these myself in Photoshop, but if you don't have those skills you could absolutely jump on Fiverr or a similar app like that where you can find a bunch of different skilled people who would be able to assist you in making all of these different things. So that is what people would get in a little order from me. It was a mask, some earplugs, a card and a little carry pouch and then I would post it out to them. So initially I got a box of 100 masks and I think the cost altogether for that was about $4.50 per unit and then I was going to sell them for either $19 or $29 depending on whether or not it included postage. So it was really, really easy and not a lot of money for me to outlay, I guess, initially for my idea, which was also really good. So I guess it would really depend on what your idea is and therefore kind of how much it's going to cost you. But when you start looking in the trending section of Alibaba, there's literally over 40 categories and like hundreds of thousands of suppliers. So you can just sort of start to get an idea in mind for the cost of what you're thinking and even just start writing things down and comparing your different ideas and what you're kind of thinking that you're really passionate about or you're going to be able to brand in a really nice way or maybe packaging things together. And more often than not, if you actually speak with your supplier, they might be able to source different things for you. So it's really worth just having a few people and starting a conversation as well. And I guess the thing that I just looked out for was how many years have they been on there? Did they 
have certain insurances, like how experienced and responsive were they and those kind of things. So that's just some stuff that I would keep in mind to make sure that you were getting a really reliable supplier. The next step for me was setting up social media accounts. So I made an Instagram for my brand. I made a Facebook page for my brand. And the final step, I made a website. So I managed to get the exact name, which was moonlighter.com. And I always recommend no matter where you are in the world, going with a .com. I think it's very universally accessible and easy for people to find. And it also just looks really professional because for me, I'm in Australia. So initially in my mind, I was like, okay, I'll do like a .com.au. But then I just realized that that's kind of blocking off the rest of the world. And then I wasn't sure what currency I would sell in if I was going to be shipping things internationally and whatnot. So for me, I find it's best to work in the US dollar. That seems to be what's most universally acceptable. And that is what a lot of items tend to be priced in. So if you can kind of think in terms of USD, I just find it is a lot more useful. So I initially did my online store using Shopify and I found that experience so easy. They had plenty of templates and it was super easy for me to get my products, have them sitting around me at home. So I knew that I would be able to immediately ship and fulfill any orders. So that was really important to me because I know that some people do start online businesses doing drop shipping, which is another avenue altogether. So I won't talk about that because I'm just not experienced enough in it. But for me, I wanted a product that I could hold, see and touch and get a real feel for the actual quality of what I was going to be selling. So Shopify, I would definitely recommend. I know there's also Squarespace, which I have my current website with and Squarespace have a lot of templates and an e-commerce offering as well. So any of those kind of ones that have like an integrated payment gateway and maybe just a template if you're not really strong with web design or of course, if you don't want to pay to have an entire website designed in the initial growth phase of your business, that is also completely understandable. So I found a really affordable plan on there and it was just really quick and easy to use in terms of adding keywords and getting products to show up in searches. And then, like I said, getting all of the details of the sale and automated emails that go out with the orders and all of that kind of thing. So that was my experience starting a business and sourcing the product. And I guess from inception to completion in terms of using Alibaba.com, it was quite quick because for me, I already had my product idea in mind. But like I said, if you're feeling a little bit unsure, there's never a bad time to start because you just never know what might kind of pique your interest. So it's good to just jump on, sort of have a browse through the trending section, write your notes and just every weekend or every week, maybe have a little check in with yourself and have a think about some ideas because you might either want to create something from scratch or just use something that's already out there, but make it better in your own way. So I definitely don't think you need to reinvent the wheel to start a business or be an entrepreneur. And I think this is a block that a lot of people have. And that is just a limiting belief that you need to overcome. You don't have to reinvent something or be the first person to create something to be successful in business. You just need to have a really solid and reliable supplier that that's going to be a constant supply chain for you over the years as well so that you can keep reordering and getting more of your product and just someone who's going to be able to communicate with you so that you can, like I said, get a sample, test the quality and just know that whatever you're creating is going to be something that you're really proud of. So I hope this video has been really helpful for you guys. If you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I will do my best to answer all of them. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.